want to see how V5 are going to be able to approach this draft, if they're going to change anything at all. Because honestly, I think the draft was great. They just need to play more aggressively with it. Yeah, just use the tools you're given. Right now, bands are the same, but uh, looks like BLD might be prioritizing that as well. Right. And honestly, I think draft was good for V5. So the fact that the things are changing, not necessarily a good thing. Aiming on the Ezreal, you know, I actually have written in my notes specifically, do not give aiming Ezreal. <laughs> so already this is off to a bad start for the side of V5. But, you know, we have talked a bit about the pressure windows you can apply onto uh, an Ezreal early. Varus, Callista are examples of champions where you can look to have agency in the lane and apply that pressure. I like that Kepler is picking up the Varus. Not only a champion can pressure in lane, but also can actually outrange the Ezreal, which is a crazy thing to suggest, but the piercing arrows just so powerful. Mm -hmm. And it, I'm curious to see with this change into the bot lane, being able to get a far more powerful tool in laning phase against aiming, how V5 are going to be able to play with this. They get not only that Varus, but if they pair it up with this Nautilus. Sure, Ezreal is not an easy target to be able to follow up and try to be able to get and kill right away, but it might give them a lot of pressure into that bot lane. But this one, this surprises me to see this early. Silas, I know Zika loves to play the champion like that LeBlanc, but seeing it blind here is definitely a bit unusual. I think it's kind of fine in this scenario. The third pick on red side means you can ban away anything you're potentially worried about from the other side. Uh, so it's kind of a little bit more comfortable for Zika than it would be if you were just like, you know, blinding its second pick, like you saw the LeBlanc come in, uh, where there was actually a chance for V5 to respond. So now anything Zika is really concerned about in that mid lane matchup, you can just thin down. And honestly, after that MVP performance, despite being, you know, countered by the, the Lissandra, I think Zika's feeling confident in this matchup. And I don't blame him one bit. I remember back in the spring, whenever I saw Zika pick the Silas, it was unstoppable. So few people were able to contend against it. The summer split hasn't had nearly that same bang as it did in the spring, but it's still definitely a powerful tool for BLG to be able to use. And now they have this Leona. This is fascinating to see out of BLG. This is far more, whoa, ho, 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 far more team fight. And then look at that. You have Camille and Gallio, one of the classic duos that you can have paired up together. Yeah, I mean, it's ease of, ease of execution. You just press your R buttons together. Kind of similar to that game one strategy from V5. Both of you press R on a target, they should die. And I think that's kind of the game plan here. The concern is a little bit, obviously, you can see things like the Zonya's coming for Zika makes them a bit of a harder, harder target. And compared to that game one, there's so much more sort of sustained damage in the composition of BLG. There was concerns if aiming went down, how is the team going to function in a longer fight? But here, I don't think that's really a problem. Biu Biu and Zika on these two carries should be able to win the extended fight, even if aiming does end up going down. But I feel like V5 obviously have some strong scaling tools in the Camille. And with the Varus, if they can find that laning advantage, maybe we see a bit of a better game. But ultimately, irrespective of what happens in the early game, when it comes to that mid game, I want to see that proactivity. You have Same. a Galio, you have a Camille do something with them. Especially the Camille Galio combo. You have Ezreal on the other side. I better see that ultimatum used every time onto aiming to lock him in place and then followed up by heroic entrance. I need to see this out of UV5. I need to see this proactivity to force a game at three. You've got the tools like you did last time. Just play with more confidence. Absolutely. And I think as well, something I, I always love when a team is struggling, Give yourself an easy to execute composition with a ton of engage tools. Just everyone have engage. And all you do is you just pick a target and you death ball them. You just run at them, you kill them. Okay, cool. Who's the next target? And that that should be you kind of take away a lot of the nuance of team fights, a lot of the, the more difficult aspects, and you simplify it to its core level. See champion, kill champion. And that allows you to focus on the other areas of the game that you are struggling in. So Hopefully for V5 here, they've got a composition with a lot of tools that they can rely on. They should be able to execute on this. But, you know, I've said that before. And realistically, if you do miss execute, BLG will punish, especially with the sort of sustained damage offered by their carries here. As we get ready for game number two between BLG and between V5. Right now, the tools for team fights are there for both teams. Even looking at the keystones, the changes 
Weiwei, he's back onto Fall Bear, but it suppressed the attack. He actually wants to be able to have damage this time around. Yeah, I think he might end up going towards the Divine, Divine Sundra here. I love that build so much. The AoE damage from the ultimate is so oh, big. The AD scaling is just absolutely massive. And on top of that, you have a lot of burst you're able to offer to the other side. So I prefer it by quite a bit. You're still tanky just thanks to the extra HP. But realistically, I think BLG, they don't need to have as much pressure in the early game. We talked about how the early game, we wanted to see them be impactful. They weren't. In the end, it didn't really matter. But I think with this composition, you have so much more breathing room. And honestly, going late isn't really a concern at all. Not at all, but we did see a little bit of miscommunication there from V5. The double ward on to the chickens, plus being completely in vision of what had already been placed down by PLG, allowed them to have these three critical wards. One right outside of the Raptors of Jug God, but then also allowing Bu Bu to have that free time to put a ward onto this blue buff means that Jug God, like last time, just not going to be able to have that impactful early game, especially not against Weiwei. Which I think is okay if you're playing the Viego. Typically, not going to be able to do too much uh, with that early agency, especially compared to a Volley Bear. But that's fine. And again, Uni Boy on the Galio. I mean, something I, when I see Alessandra, I think, okay. You push mid, you rotate, you dive. That, that's like three-step plan. Galio is kind of similar. You should be able to push mid, rotate, and then look to set up dives or plays in the side lane. So ideally looking for that to come out. But I actually like this play from Weiwei. If you can target Uniboy early, he can really put a spanner in that plan for step one. Oh, was unfortunately not able to body block the Justice Punch right there for Zika. It means Uniboy was able to get away relatively scot-free all the while. Let's just see that... Jug God trying desperately to be able to clear out, because like you said, it's not like he really wants to fight too early on, and the fact that his mid laner is fine, not really threatened, it's looking actually pretty good at the moment for V5. And you can see in the bot lane, that kind of dynamic between the Varus and the Ezreal, a lot of harass coming down, aiming force to farm under tower in this situation, and even with picking up all these minions, still down in CS so this is kind of what you want to see when you have this this virus and Ezreal is applying that early pressure you have priority bot lane you have priority mid the only lane really contesting that is the top side with Bu Bu on that Gwen obviously really strong level one able to get control of the lane but it's not really a problem for Weiwei he's just able to pick up that top side skull but I think this is important for V5 to be able to start being proactive on the map and they are looking towards that boss Good side skull to secure for Joe God here get some vision down in the jungle of Weiwei uh, and I like, again, these moves from Reheal. I think he's been pretty proactive on the map, which has been a really big breath of fresh air for this V5 roster. I like this call a lot from V5 because there was that potential that Weiwei continued to reign supreme over the Scuttle Crabs and constantly had his fill of all of the Crustacean that he wanted to. But the, with the push coming in from mid, from bot for V5, it made it a lot more difficult. So Weiwei instead has to make a play elsewhere, looking for the top lane, but it's already the Ignite burning onto Allies. All they need is one more slap, the claws to be able to get first blood, but Weiwei, uh... he will die in Retribution. Yeah, and I'm not really sure that's actually that good of a trade in this situation because Eli uh, is just going to be able to TP up back to the top lane, catch the wave. With Weiwei Wei dead, there's no threat of like a regank coming in instantly. So, you know, I think the Camille's perfectly fine. You get a kill, right. the body bear gets a kill. I know who I'd rather have my kill on. So not really a successful first gank coming out from Weiwei. Wei. No, not at all. Really... That was a bit unfortunate for the fact, for the side of BLG, for the fact that, like you said, it was Alliance getting this kill on Camille. That Ignite really helping out to be able to turn it around. And the, you always have to worry about that threat, this Camille being able to suddenly take over the fight in the 1v1 against Bu Bu. Just because Camille, as a split push threat, is always going to be able to contend against the greatest. Yeah, and I mean, especially Divine Sundra is just so strong right now. And I think the Divine Sundra build in combination with having a Galio on your team means even though you're a great split pusher, you're so strong in team fights as well. Like, Divine Sundra is a first item, gives you a ton of HP, makes you a lot bulkier. You actually get a decent amount of healing as well from that first item spike. And then having the Galio to follow up on your engages means you're not going to be nearly as vulnerable. So I feel like Elias is in a good position to potentially be a big carry for his team in this game. But still, early days as of yet. He's going to throw down some wards. Got that control ward in the river and that ward in the tribush. So a little bit better protected against Weiwei should there be a return down. And you can even see that Weiwei is on the top half of the map to look for that. To try to see if they can slow down the pace 
of Elias on this Camille. Well, Juggon essentially answering that, essentially making sure there is no physical way that Weiwei is going to be able to get onto Elias, not at least with a good answer from them. We see actually another roam coming out from Rekeel up to the top side of the map. And again, I, I like this window, but there is a little bit of concern if you're not back too soon. This wave is going to push in towards BLG. So could potentially punish the virus if, if he isn't able to push the wave in. So you time. see Rekeel doesn't find anything. The top side is going to recall instantly. Man, Jug God, he spent a long time here in this top lane. Sure, you have the push slowly towards Lion's turret, but... The fact that you weren't able to get anything, it means that Weiwei has had free reign over the jungle, getting the scuttle hab, uh, scuttle crab, scuttle crab the moment it had to respond, as well as potentially being able to take the dragon. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's pretty easy. You got the bot prio, uh, you can come to pick that one up. And mid lane, not doing, going too hot so far for Uni Boy, honestly. And here's one thing is that we used to see a lot of Silas into Twisted Fate for the simple reason that, oh, Twisted Fate wants to roam, well, I'll just steal a Zolt and do the same. That kind of applies here as well with the Galio Silas matchup. If you are looking to go for those big uh, Heroes Entrance roams, then obviously Zika can just follow that. And I think they might potentially be looking for a dive here. Remember, this is the body bear with an ultimate, and there is a Silas who can follow with his. Keep in mind, though, Jug God is in the wings. He's a level down to way, 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 way. Are you going to look for that damage? Here's going to be the heroic entrance answered with the knockup. He tries to dive away, but he's dragged back in, and there's the alt onto the dirt. And now the returned heroic entrance to be able to get a double knockup. He got still barely alive, but they got the needlework to be able to get the kill. It's going to be two now for Bew Bew. He's bounced around underneath the turret, so it's going to be two back for the side of B5. Uniboy, he's burning to the ignite, and he's easily killed off by Zika, diving underneath this turret. Kepler trying to be able to survive. He snipes one back, but he missed Ooh, the, the chains of corruption, so that aiming's able to take him down. He had a lot of mis-execution there from V5. Honestly thought BLG might end up paying for that dive heavily off the back of that, just for the simple fact that there were so many members of V5 and the Galio under tower. With some really solid execution, V5 making a few mistakes there, and the fact that Elias obviously couldn't TP in. So we see the replay, the Galio comes in, but Jug got able to mostly get away from that damage combo. And then we get the return Galio gank coming in, but obviously the volleyball value so big at shutting down the tower. And I like the decision from BLG. Everyone sort of pulls away from the galley wall, but look how much Bu is able to do here. Finishing off those two targets before getting taunted in the tower. And then we see the return play on a uni boy. I like Kepler's piercing arrow play here. It's solid to take out Weiwei, Wei, but then this chains of corruption, you really need to be hitting this in this clutch moment. It's not like aiming flash to arcane shifted, then I'd be more understanding. He just walked to the side and you ended up missing. I think he was trying to predict. <laughs> At least I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. That was what he was trying to do. And now Jug God. They had just gotten the eye of the Rift Herald. Unfortunately, way ways here as well. Oh, don't, please. Not, no, not again. Okay, thank you, thank you. I got a little worried there. Deja vu. Yeah, looks like uh, PP God succeeding over Jug God. Looks like one religion a little bit stronger than the other there. And PP God able to match up with his jungler and take out the, the Viego once again. And this Viego was fine in the early game, sort of independent, but starting to struggle quite now. And you can see BLG have really established their pressure on the map. I'm loving these leans towards the side lanes because it just makes it so difficult for V5 to play around. The Viego not really in a position where he wants to be contesting this. Well, Zika, oh, not actually going to be able to land those chains to be able to abscond, abduct onto Reheal, so he falls back on that one. Probably actually good that the chains didn't connect because you can see just in the wings that Jug God had rotated around. Look and see if they can actually get that victory royale over uh, PP God, but unfortunately just not really in the position just yet. I do like this from V5. They are playing far more proactive than they had last time around when, they, sure, they got these early leads. They had that 5-0 advantage, but at least here, despite the fact that it's kind of been back and forth, they're trying. They're, they're trying to see if they can have a little bit more bravado. The thing is, I feel like BLG are also doing significantly more. Like that, that bot lane dive going in their favor, able to get three plates. They then lean top side, kill Jug God, and get three plates there. They're substantially ahead already. And again, I don't think there's as much burden on BLG to find the momentum in the early game. Their comp's going to scale really well right now. And so far, haven't really seen too much impact from Uni Boy. He's down and farming lane essentially organically. It's not like anyone's really done anything to tip that in anyone's favor. It's just Zika out farming his opponent. And also this Galio who you'd hope to see roaming, making an impact in the side lanes, hasn't really done it other than countering that dive from BLG that BLG still won out in.
And look at this, <laughs> it's still BLG the ones that threaten to be the first to pull the trigger in these rotations, these die poten potential plays that they want to be able to get. But right now, this is a good pull coming in from Ryuhail, even though it's going to be the Solar Flare coming in from PP Gun and Amy trying to be able to get away. It's TP in behind, a lot of damage on PP Gun. Here we go, Amy, he gets first and down, stolen soul. PP God cannot run away, not from his ally, not from two kills picked up from B5 while Uniboy. Okay, he does peel back off of that potential skirmish. Oh my god. <laughs> he misses the minion yep. with the winds of war. I like the proactivity from V5. It is going to sacrifice the tower in the top lane, but with that herald being thrown down, they might actually win out in this race. I think it's hard to see. Oh uh, no, BB is going to be able to get it. Yeah, BB gets it. They're a little bit behind in the bot side, but still, I like this. They're trading across the map. They get those two kills as well. I like the use of the TP advantage from Alias. Uh, from allies this is just good play coming out from v5 which is something we haven't seen too much of in game one they're still down in gold but at least they're being proactive they are and this is what we need to see continue out of them continue to look for these plays but billy billy they're not any ones to be laughed at either they are also trying to see if they can continue their proactivity continue to find the plays themselves especially since they've got the potential to be able to stack up these early dragons they already got the ocean soul and with jug god being nowhere to be seen in this jungle it's an easy take for blg yeah i'm not sure the lane priority as well we see uh, Kepler moving up mid, but if you look bot lane, that tower is just dead then, essentially for free, uncontested. And aiming's gonna be able to pick up the plates on top of that. Kind of feels like we get these points in the mid game where VP just kind of forget about certain waves, certain lanes, and I'm giving them up. They are gonna try and lean towards the top side and take this tower, but uh, they are That's sacrificing a, a fair bit. I guess more plates, they are winning out overall uh, in this trade cross map. But uh, I think Galio is definitely someone who could have just cleared out that wave in the bot lane and then move back over. Because right now you see Uniboy not really doing anything. He channeled his recall and then canceled it there. And now he's canceled it again. Kind of just not really doing anything, wasting a bit of time there. I also even think that this just favors BLG. That's a lot of solo play gold and solo turret gold picked up by aiming on Ezreal, trying to be able to get towards that two item spike to be even more of a threat in the mid game. Well. Finally, we see V5 take down this turret. It took him so long, and that is so much gold accrued for this bot lane. Yeah, I mean, overall, honestly, there were more plates in the top tower, so I feel like you're trading pretty well there. I like the play from V5. It was kind of just Uni Boy's role on it, you know? He was kind of hovering between the jungle, wasn't really doing anything. Start recalling, cancelled. Start recalling, cancelled. Wasn't needed, ended up recalling. And I just feel like the Galio can essentially one shot a wave, and it's pretty hard to dive, but. Either way, you know, V5 still trading cross map well. 2,000 gold down, but my other concern is these two dragons in favor of BLG. Three minutes 40 till that third one. It's once again an Infernal Soul, which would be absolutely massive to secure. And V5 are going to have to contest that one. And this is where they really start to falter in most of their games when it comes to those big fights for those uh, neutral objectives. Especially with these two compositions. They're both so explosive. There's not really that front line like we kind of saw where Weiwei did go for the tank Volibear in the previous game. It's far more the damage that he's indexed into now. So they feel like they might just want to go for the full face fight here. And either team could really win this since they're both so squishy on each side. Yeah, I feel like there are some members who actually have a decent amount of like hidden survivability, you know, particularly like the Silas and, and yep. the, the Volley Bear. It seems like you can sort of blow them up with the itemization, but their, their raw kits are so strong when as well. It's really going to come down to execution. I think in the longer fights, BLG tend to be favored. So I want to see that instant impact oh. from V5, V5's ult. It looks like it's going to be the fight around this Rift Herald, though. It's so close to going down. Weiwei wants to make sure they secure it, but the fight will continue in the back line as BB God has to go gold, and they got a lot of damage out of BB. He's bounced around for so long. Finally, he's killed off by Uniboy, but look at Kepler. He's getting chased down by Weiwei while the rest of the team is trying to be able to get back on top of him as well. They're going to be able to trade back and forth, but it's two for two at the moment. The eye is still in the inventory of Weiwei, even though he died at the very beginning. Jug God going to be able to get away, aiming, doing a lot of damage. It might be even out in the kills, but it's still the advantage is picked up by PLG. And this is why I love the Divine Sundra Volley Bear so much more. He just jumps on Kepler and just kills him. Just takes him out. Didn't even use the ultimate, by the way. He still has that available. And he just 100 is zeros the Varus. 
it's insane how much damage you're capable of doing while still being really bulky and hard to deal with ultimately it isn't even trade in terms of kills but blg winning out with that held and we get the replay it initially actually starts okay for v5 we see pp god trying to target your god but he manages to get out initially and then the galley will cause a lot of disruption you be caught in the midst and kind of decimated but then what's way way here you know doesn't actually have the ult available yet but just jumps oh, on a kettler and look at this damage coming out from the volley bear there's just very little counterplay but that burst at the end even with allies and jug god trying to uh, turn back and peel it's just not enough it's crazy to see that burst potential out of this volley bear because like you said it's just how much he's able to do to force off kepler make sure that he's not able to get that chip damage with this prowling claw with this lethality virus build and completely take out one member on uh, going back i kind of want to rewind the play completely because Biu Biu, he was the target initially from a lot of that it allowed weiwei to be able to dive into the back line but i'm more surprised that it was Biu Biu that was focused by v5 and not aiming because you could see that aiming was left relatively untouched by both teams in that game uh, the game that fight yeah i think it's just difficult to get onto aim and commit so deep for him i think it's kind of a scenario where v5 are like okay one target at a time one target at a time and i think it works with this composition because you have really good burst damage and on top of that you have the resets from the viego so the main thing is killing someone so you can start getting those resets starting to get the added value whereas if you do dive on aim and there's a good chance you end up just getting oh pulled. whoa whoa reheal it gets burst down every time i think he's tanky he just gets annihilated pp god he saw the target and except for it being zika they still found the assassination regardless they had the inside track on into that play and now they're forcing down this mid lane to be able to take a lot of damage onto the tier one with the help of shelly yeah, and with this, they can honestly just lean towards the dragon off the back of this. They want to secure the tower, uh, and they should be able to off the back of this, but dragon is up and available and would be their third. Oh, Engage actually coming in. Man, that is a lot of engage in the back line. They finally are able to kill Zika, but at what cost? Jug God, he's alive, but just barely on the other side. And the fact that Jug God has to recall, it is an easy third dragon that BLG can take. Yeah, and it feels like in this game, V5 are doing more. There's less inactivity than we saw in that game one. Definitely uh, more more just getting into these fights, but it's still BLG coming out ahead. And it's kind of the expectation. These comps pretty even in terms of the skirmish and power right now. And really, BLG are so much better in the, at this historically. It's what we've seen from them. They aren't necessarily the early game team. They are a team who leans into that mid to late game more so. And so far, they've been delivering there. Way, way in particular on this uh, volley bear we saw at the start of that play. The damage the ult does, uh, when he just popped Reheal, it, it's honestly insane. It's pretty disturbing. I did not think Reheal would die that quickly. But then again, you know, got to look at the inventory. He's got the Seeker's Arm Guard. He went for the stopwatch. It's that rush onto Zonius as opposed to going for the full tank. You can see after the play, it's just so easy for BLG to be able to dive into this back line and try to make sure they can take out the members of E5. Yeah, and they try and turn around pretty well, but again, as you said before in the previous fight, aiming untouched, and it's going to be a consistent thing. It's not like last game where we saw a Callista with big threats who could take it down. This is aiming, just being able to have a pretty free Ezreal game, and it's it's never really going to go in your favor if Ezreal's able to have a free Ezreal game. Now, we have to actually see from the inventories, BLG, four stopwatches across the board, <laughs> and PP God's working on his Zonyas. So I think they know what the threat is. It's that Camille Galio combo, and they have Ooh. tools to answer. Well, PP God gets himself caught out. It looks like they're trying to see if they can return the favor of before, where it was Reheal getting caught out. So they immediately take down Leona and immediately turn on to this tier one. That's important to get this mid tier one. It really opens up the map. And the fact that BLG were able to get theirs, they answer back with a nice pick. They are going to potentially lose this tower, this top tier two in return, but I think the trade is still worth it overall. Oh. oh! Okay, Aiming. Aiming showing us why he loves this Ezreal. Just assassinating Kepler right in the midst of everyone of V5. Whew. Okay, people, just don't give Aiming Ezreal anymore. You just gotta ban it or steal it away immediately. Yeah, honestly, I feel like Aiming should change his name to Hitting because the guy's just not missing at this point. Able to assassinate Kepler. Now, the Baron threat is real. I don't even think V5 are contesting this. This is looking pretty doomed. It is not looking good at all. That is a free 20 minute on the dot Baron for BLG. 
The fact that Kepler only now is respawning and Jug God has to completely bail from a fight that PP God tried to instill into them. And right now, this is feeling like last game, just a little bit earlier for BLG. Yeah, and two minutes and a half on the Infernal Soul. Wait. That goes over to BLG. Wait. It is so doomed. It Wait. is. I cannot emphasize how doomed the game will feel at that point because they'll have a gold lead and they'll have the extra impact of, you know, the strongest soul in the game. So B5, they're kind Ox. of in a position where you have to contest that, but it's so hard to, you know, we have... Oh, we're going to have the replay first. I can talk about oh, for, yeah, yeah, look yeah, at I'll aiming bring, here. I'll bring up my thing later, but just bopped them. Just bopped them. That's a beautiful window there. TP comes in to try and secure more. They don't need to. They get the virus. That's enough. So, yeah, there's a... Uh... There's a potential that we're, uh, everyone on BLG is going uh, Zonias. Uh, <laughs> I love that so much, honestly. I, that's know, why, that's why I noticed it. I'm just like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Like, we've seen Zonias. Zonias on Zika and PB is standard, you know, on the Gwen and the Silas. Zonias on Leona has become a more standard thing. It is actually seen a fair bit on the Volley Bear because he has decent AP scalings and also being yep. able to jump in and stasis is great. And on Ezreal, you know, he has AP scalings, but ultimately we've seen this. Back when there was more of a hybrid build, you would be able to pick up the Zonyas on the Ezreal. Ultimately, he just completely shuts down V5's ultimate combo, which is that Galio Camille. It also means if you're caught by Kepler's ultimate, you can just stasis for the duration. So I actually love this defensive itemization from BLG. It's just hilarious to see that all five members are going for it. That's the thing. It's like, normally, you, you, maybe you can make the argument for four, but the fact that you've seen Leona's and Nautilus let's go for it now it's just it's just hilarious i just saw that I'm like wait a minute we already got two built and we see that the seekers arm guard doubled up and we see the stopwatches and if this game drags out there's just so much time to be bought by blg with those that like you said what can the galio what can the camille do when everyone's gold in the moment you dove into the back line absolutely just makes it very difficult very difficult to deal with and i gotta say uh sort of um sorry i just lost my point that another factor is here is not only can you build the five uh, stopwatches but anyone who has zonius anyone who hasn't used stopwatch can build can buy a stopwatch as well <laughs> and you have the double stasis five. effect oh they've got them all oh i mean yeah <laughs> at this point you have all those it feels really hard for v5 to win this one and i think this kind of just shows how broken zonius is right now as an item how broken the stasis is They've got all five. Oh, that, that's just beautiful. Now, V5, they're trying to see if they can force the fight before all the members are able to join up. But with that heroic entrance stolen away by Zika, and they can dive into the back line to get so much damage on top of V5. Heroic entrance gonna be nothing that they can really utilize it with. And everyone chased away. Allies trying to be able to get away from Weiwei. But the damage that Fall Bearer is able to provide is enough to be able to help aiming take him down. While Zika looks to see if they can hunt down Jug God. Make sure that he's not gonna be able to escape. He jumps on top of PP God to try to see who's going to be the better religion, but we knew at the beginning it's all PP God. One. One Zonyas, I believe, was used there. So V5 went even close. There was so much more available, and yet yeah, it was just PP God dropping the Zonyas. BLG seemed completely unfazed, untouched in that fight. Now, with an AK Gold Lead and that Infernal Soul in pocket, they're just absolutely on fire. Literally, they're literally on fire right now, and it's not looking like it's going to be good for V5, because soon they will burn as well. Everything is burning around them. It is not okay, and this game has just been blown wide open. And a near 8,000 gold lead for BLG, just shy of 25 minutes. And you know, it's not looking good. It's not looking good for V5, uh, by all means. This could well be 0-7 for them, and it's looking like that most likely. They really need a miracle here. And the thing is, you know, normally in the scenarios, the, the setups I say is, okay, catch someone isolated, catch someone who's alone, find a numbers advantage. But when everyone has Zonyas, you know, and there's two TPs as well, it's like, I don't even think you can kill anyone quick enough before nope. the rest of BLG just fly in. It's, it's such a difficult spot to be in. And the fact that, you know, they're so far ahead that they can afford these, you know, luxury items, I guess, for some of the champions <laughs> and still just have more damage is, is kind of insane. Although, in fairness, I only feel like it's a luxury item for aiming. I feel like for everyone else, it's kind of just part of the build nowadays. I guess Volibear is a little bit fringe, but, you know, 
Bu uh, Bu and Zika would probably be building the Zonyas regardless. You're right on that front. Same with PP guns. Like those those ones, definitely not the luxury item. But for way way for aiming, the fact that they feel like they can build these items just shows the massive lead that it's insurmountable for V5. It's not impossible here in the LPL. We have seen a number of games where a team is behind at, the, you know, 10k this early into the game and still somehow lose. But here, I just don't know what V5 are going to be able to do to make sure they can do that to BLG. It's so long, it'll take so long for them to kill these members that there's going to be way more damage that BLG can out, uh, outlast and out-survive in a fight. Plus... Think about how much armor aiming has, by the way. You know how obviously the Lethality Virus benefits from low armor targets. Aiming has a Frozen Heart and a Zonyas. He probably has like almost 200 armor, if not more. He is so tanky, like the piercing arrows will do nothing. Well, here, let's test it out right now. As Zika goes golden, that's one Zonia's used. Let's see who else is going to use it. They're going to be able to get the heroic entrance to be able to get the knockup onto one. It's two with Weiwei golden in the back line, getting a lot of damage on to PB God, but aiming, he's left untouched. And when you leave him untouched, we have seen the damage he's able to get out. They've got the kill onto Alive, and they're chasing down the members of TP is being used by Zika to re-engage into this fight and take down a clean ace over V5, looking for the two zero victory as they try to see if they can soar through the standings yeah blg comfortable in this series i felt like i never really even got out of first gear pretty convincing one and uh v5 you know they've made these changes to the roster i'm hoping that this is just a sign that they need a bit more time to sink in but not a convincing series and blg will close this one out in style yeah, they will. Every single one of them have fashion sense with the Zonia's Hourglass. 2-0 victory for BLG. That second game, entirely convincing. Way more so than game one. But it seemed like both games, it was always BLG in control. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, again, there's criticisms. Game one, I feel like the pace could have been a bit higher. Maybe a different team could have punished uh, this Ezreal pick in the game two. But realistically, I think pretty comfortable from BLG and kind of the level we expect. Obviously, the scoreline isn't the best, but we did say earlier the competition has been pretty uh, stern so far. Although in general, the whole LPL has been pretty mm -hmm. stiff competition, but I feel like now is their opportunity to start racking up those wings, climbing up the standings, and this is definitely a much needed one. Whereas V5, you made the changes. I, I really liked Reheal uh, this series. I think he was a really strong performer for the team, some good roam, some good team fighting. Whereas I feel like they're still missing out some of that early aggression that PZX, uh, PZX offered. And it still feels like those issues are there. The identity we had from the previous iteration of the roster where, you know, it comes to team fights and they just aren't performing as well. They're missing out the win conditions. They're not able to find the setups. And again, I'll reiterate the point. If you ain't winning team fights in this matter, you ain't winning games. And that's what BLG are doing. They are winning these fights. They are finding the skirmishes that work out so well for them. And that is why they get that 2-0 victory over V5. And just looking at how they're able to play a lot of these, it's a crazy thing to see from BLG with the fact that aiming's been absolutely a terror in that bot lane. But Zika as well has been looking a lot stronger. Even last uh, split in spring, he looked all right, but he's been looking like a good contender to help out aiming be another one of those threats. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, th I think that's the thing. Is this, comp this team is multifaceted. It feels like everyone has the opportunity where they can carry, really. Uh, particularly, we saw uh, Weiwei have a really strong performance on the Volibear in that game. Uh, a lot of proactivity, trying to make things work. And for the most part, his pairing with PP got a good way in them answering uh, the, the Viego and shutting it down early in the jungle. I mean, the crazy thing, too, is the fact that Reheal, even if he did great in these games, he was the target for a lot of the damage that would come out initially from the side of VLG, realizing that he was actually a far squishier target than even V5 thought. Yeah, and I mean, it's kind of painful because I feel like, you know, part of that is the hesitance from the side of V5 to like engage. It leaves these windows where the support has to push ahead, the support's isolated. I would love to see what Reheal could do maybe uh, with, with sort of teammates on the same page, but this game just felt rough this series felt rough for v5 it's like they just felt like you know 
initially they would start off okay in the games with a bit of proactivity but it's still not as much as they used to have uh, obviously with that first five minutes being so strong in in previous iterations of the roster and then we get to the later stages and they just completely flop and you can see the goal difference there was never really a point where i felt like oh a v5 coming back it was just like okay they're behind they're more behind okay now they're really behind okay the game's done Aiming was, I think, one of the main reasons for that as well. You could see from the damage. While well, Kepler was able to get some damage, it's kind of like what we saw last game, isn't it? Kepler had oh, this I insane see. damage graph, but it's more because he was just chipping at the members and not actually really being the one to get the kills. I saw this piercing arrow in the last fight. You know how we were talking about the, the Zonyas and the Frozen Heart armor mm -hmm. for aiming? I saw a piercing arrow hit him, like a full charge one. It did like 250 damage. It did like nothing. It barely chipped <sighs> his health. And I was like, oh my god. It's so doomed, actually. It's, it's so big brain as well against the Thali Varus, who obviously wants low armor targets, has that flat penetration. To have so much armor stacked on the Ezreal, there's just no counterplay. The Seeker's Arm Guard to be able to give that extra armor, like you said, the Frozen Heart as well. That just he uh, aiming was actually the tank in that game. Let's be real; everyone else was not as tanky. It was it was really aiming who was like, "All right, cool, I can I can absorb all this damage, and I'm also going to be able to get so much damage with my Mystic Shots because not only do I have the Divine's Under, I also have that Zonia's for extra AP damage." Yeah, I mean, it, it was it was pretty funny. I like seeing the the big zonyas across the team. I, I think it's I love when we get these situations where teams itemize a little bit more creatively. They look at what they're up against and they go, "Hey, this is what we're dealing with. What can we answer with? Uh, answer it with?" And when everyone has the zonyas, because you kind of get those scenarios. This is particularly a thing with QSSs where, like, let's say there's a Skarner or a Malzahar under the team. And you have the QSS, and so what do they do? They target your teammates. But everyone had a Zonya, so there's no alternative. Everyone is a bad option. And I don't think it's any surprise to anybody in this game, too, that aiming is our MVP. You got Ezreal. We expect good things from aiming when he's on Ezreal. And sure enough, that's exactly what happened. Yeah, I think it's completely fair. I mean, like I said, don't give aiming Ezreal really strong performer on this. I do want to give an honorable mention to Weiwei, who had a really strong jungle performance to set the team up. But yeah, I mean, this moment. moments like this, the foresight, the aggression to dive in with a Nautilus and a Galio there and find that assassination onto the Varus. Just really good presence of mind. And this is the moment. What's this piercing arrow? <laughs> Look at that damage. <laughs> oh Look at that. It does nothing. Oh, he heals it instantly with one mystic shot thanks to the Sundra. It's, it's, oh, it's so doomed. But yeah, oh. I mean, aiming just on fire this game. I you see, you see that, and you're, you'll see my expression when we come back to the cameras. I, I just, it's so doomed. That's it's so, it's so doomed. There's the counter to the Thalti virus. Just have five tanks essentially because everyone's stuck in armor. You're, yeah, you're, you're a tank. You think you have this, but you know what we do have? We have an interview ready with PP God. So why don't we toss it over to Wendy? Take it away. Hello everyone, welcome to the interview and now I'm standing by with PP God. So I believe so many overseas audience are looking forward to your interview. Could you say hi to the audience first? 那首先恭喜你们今天拿下比赛的胜利。有很多很多的外国观众一直期待我们PPGOD的一个采访。那先跟大家打个招呼吧。Hi, I'm with PP God. Oh, welcome. So let's talk a bit more about today's game. So in game one, the opponents, Victory 5, they started with 5-0 in the total kills. But it feels like BLG, you guys were able to play around the macro and made super good use of the split push to open the situation. So tell us more about the in-game strategies, especially in the mid game. 说到今天的比赛嘛，第一局的话，其实对面是一个五杠零的人头开局，但是我们感觉BLG好像很好的利用了一个运营的打法，然后同时说包括一些边带，然后为自己彻底打开了局面，拿下比赛。所以说你们可
glass. And especially at Ezreal got the stopwatch as well, so could we know the reason for that atom build? 那说到第二局，感觉是对你们来讲比较一边倒的一个局面嘛？但我们感觉比较有趣的是，好像你们五个人最后都出了金身，特别是 EZ 出金身，好像也不太常见。所以说，能问一下，会选择这样的一个嗯出装的原因是什么吗？呃，因为对面是金刚影加加里奥嘛，就只要第一套他们强开很很厉害嘛，只要第一波他们开到我们没没死人的话就，就就可以赢下团的。So because the opponents they got Galio and Camir, there's very they can make a very strong hard engage. So with that stopwatch or the hourglass, we will not be dead in the team fights, and after that, this will be our battlefield, and we can easily win all the team fights. And also for this split, you together with Wei Wei, the two of you have joined in Blibli Gaming, this new team, and currently we have seen you guys have an even better performance. So tell us more about the team synergy currently. 那这个赛季，我们 P P g o 也是和微微一起来到了 B L G 这个新队伍嘛？感觉你们现在好像状态是越打越好了。那现在和队伍的一个默契程度怎么样了呢？嗯，现在默契的话，就七八分吧，感觉就现在都配合的蛮好的。I will rate our team seven or eight out of ten. I feel like we have a quite good performance and quite good synergy currently. And my last question is, um, there are, you really got a very huge overseas fan base. So, last question, do you have any message you want to say to all the PP leavers, to all the fans all around the world? 那最后一个问题也是，我们 PP Go 的在海外拥有非常非常多的粉丝嘛？那最后有没有什么想要对我们的 PP 信徒，我们的 PP Go 的的粉丝说的呢？就非常感谢大家，就一直支持我吧，就我会继续努力的。Let's go. So I really appreciate all your support and thank you so much for that. And definitely I will keep working harder in the future. And let's go. And thank you and let's go in the future. And 再次的恭喜你们，也希望你们在接下来的比赛中也能越打越好。And see you later. Bye bye.